I actually have the exact opposite problem. I can't stick with one style. This is not a problem. This is a very good thing. Making different styles really helps you to stop doing the same tracks over and over again. And overall, it really helps you to evolve as a producer, become a better producer and also make more different tracks and maybe even some innovative stuff as well. Don't see it as a problem. I think you didn't see it as a problem. I think this comment was more meant to show off how awesome you are and you are. So for everybody else, you know, really take a minute, try out different styles, have a little bit of fun, play around and you will definitely see some benefits from that. What's up everybody, I'm Alex at generalgeibel.com Welcome to the fifth episode of your viewer comments and the comments keep coming and I'm very happy about it So let's not waste any time, let's get into the next comment Well it looks like the audience become dumb enough to serve them basics This topic frustrated me in the past when I was listening to those big names in the scene And I was asking myself, seriously, this is it? And people love this shit? But at the same time when you create something similar the feedback was Sorry but sounds too basic, nothing special, make it more complex I mean, what the fuck? Well, I kind of understand your frustration with that, but the problem is when you send out tracks Usually you reach more like producer people and they listen to the music differently than like regular people This is where it comes down to that why you get this kind of stupid feedback on from them You know, it's like who the fuck says this is too basic. I mean come on, like listen to stuff like I like it loud It's the most basic melody ever but it's around for more than 20 years and you know been covered multiple times by also likes like Tiesto and shit like that It's not about like complexity which makes something great I mean like I said listen to a lot of the pop music coming out Listen to fucking rap shit with all that auto tune and all that bullshit I mean come on what is more basic than that and you know all those kind of detuned and out of tune uh, 808 kicks and those beats and shit so it's not about that your problem is that you talk usually to producers and this is kind of the big problem for every upcoming producer is a regular listener listens to what he knows and what he sees you know there are not many people who are really on the search for like new artists new tracks and stuff like that usually those are already people who either are like total freaks or who uh, are kind of somehow working in the industry or trying to work in the industry. In other words, that can be like record label people and they can be DJs or other producers who are just checking out what's going on and shit like that. Usually those are the people that you reach and they think like, oh, that's fucking basic, make it complex and shit. But nobody wants to listen to your super complex shit. And this is the reason why, you know, those kind of bigger artists who already reach the regular people they get away with that because the regular people like that shit regular people listen to a track and say like okay I like it or I don't like it they don't know why they like it or they don't know why they don't like it but sure as fuck if I go to my mom and I play her like the most uh, innovative sound design complex track ever she will say what the fuck is that shit this is kind of the reality and I guess like you know your problem is not that like the feedback you're getting is uh, like different from what you see is going on the, your problem is that you're not getting the feedback from from the people who actually like listen to that shit and actually go to the parties and shit instead of uh, sitting on the internet and bitching around. So if I could give you one solid piece of advice, just do whatever you feel for, you know? So if you think it's great, it's great, you know, just uh, do your best to, to reach people and uh, to get their confirmation that it's great. I said it in the previous video, the market always decides. Uh, your only problem is to reach that market and this is kind of a big fucking problem But if you reach that market you will know afterwards if you're onto something or not I'm really tempted to buy the nimble kick, but I have a doubt will it do much better than FL studio sampler pitching? I saw a lot of people saying that FL pitching is very bad for hardstyle kicks and this nimble kick seems to do its job Well, so I would like to know if it's much better than FL studio pitching Well, I can't really answer that question because I'm not an FL studio user You should stop listening to other people listen to how your FL studio pitching sounds if you don't like it look for something else Try out nimble kick whatever. I mean there are a lot of benefits using nimble kick besides the fact that you can pitch the kick you know the like little sound design tools they brought in especially since the last update you can get really a lot out of that and to be honest I mean like you know I don't know you personally I don't know but 
it's like 30 euro for nimble kick i mean like you know the last time you went out on a party how much did you spend i don't know if you smoke you know how much you spend on cigarettes how much you spend on weed but come on 30 euro is like not that big of a fortune you know considering that like you know having like a good night out somewhere uh depending where you live in this world but like in germany if i want to go out in the bar and have a couple of drinks i'm 30 euros are gone like that i mean again depending on where in the world you live of course like there are places in the world where like 30 euros like a monthly salary but um you know in some parts of the world you know people spend much more on like really dumb shit you know i can really tell you if the pitch algorithm is better or worse or whatever but again you know stop listening to like you know getting opinions and shit just listen for yourself if you are satisfied with what you get stick with it if you're not satisfied you know try out nimble kick there are different solutions you can still fuck around with contact i mean you know, hardstyle kick's been pitched for many years before nimble kick came around and it kind of worked. So, and it will continue to work with other stuff as well. So, you know, don't get obsessed over it. Make up your mind. If you are not happy, look for other solutions. Very smart approach you have. I am not an able user, but this translates into different DAW if the producer knows the workstation in and out. Thanks for this. Oh yeah, this is great. Thanks for this comment, because this is something I kind of try to communicate on every occasion, but, um, you know, a lot of people seem to be just dumb. Most of the shit I do uh, is not really able related or lately logic related or anything, you know. As you said, if you know your DAW, you need to understand the whole process and you can transform that whole process into any type of uh, DAW you're using. And this is kind of what my channel is about. Uh, if I do something that is Ableton exclusively, I usually I say it. This is kind of an Ableton exclusive thing, but maybe you figure out a way how to do it in your DAW. But yeah, the only thing I don't do is like, you know, step by step type of bullshit. Yeah, this is how you do it. And you need this exact plugin. You need this DAW and shit like that. This is that shit that I'm not doing. And I'm very happy that there are people out there who kind of understand it. My channel and everything I do is more about concepts. You need to understand, you know, I don't make like, oh, how to make this type of screech. Just recently I made a video how to make screeches overall and we just talk about different concepts of making screeches which are really doesn't depend on which plugin you use anything. So if you understand the basic concepts it really doesn't matter what tools you use, what DAWs, anything doesn't matter. At the end it's really understanding how this comes about the way it comes about and just uh, use what you have and try to figure out how to kind of realize it with the tools you have at your hand. Absolute legend. I produce mainly techno and asset core and try, but your tutorials help me a lot. Jeep it up. Yeah, I'm gonna jeep it up, my man. Thanks, Alex. Nice techniques. Much better to use it for hard dance than be another Psytrance producer. I'm pretty sure the world doesn't need any more Psytrance producers. Uh, we're kind of good, you know. We're good with Psytrance producers. It's kind of the same, like, I don't know, I never get why they're still filming porn. You know, the amount of porn available on this planet should be good for the next, like, 500 generations. But for some reason, they're still filming it. Yeah. I agree. The world doesn't need another Psytrance producer. I don't want the butthurts or DJ XY come after me, but as an addition to your awesome tutorial, I would recommend to open the table editor and level out the harmonics so you have more control on the low end, taking care of the mud. And even you might take the first harmonic all the way down so the kick can't cut through. Just my two cents on this Psytrance kick topic. It is a very legit point, you know. Um, I haven't thought about doing stuff like that because, in my opinion, it seems to be overkill a little bit. But it's a very good comment and definitely a very valuable comment. But seeing the other comments that people's minds been fucking blown that you can use like the uh, LFO in envelope mode to create a, a rolling baseline. I guess like going into detail into the uh, uh, wavetable editor and fuck around with harmonics and stuff would be probably a little bit too much for the majority of my viewers and probably also too much for the majority of producers. For like everybody who has too much time on his hands and um, really likes to get into that whole nerd mode, uh, it's a very good idea and you know, why not? Try it out. 
FL Studio suck in reality. Logic Pro or Ableton is for advanced producer. At the end, it really doesn't matter. They're all good enough nowadays. Uh, the, the problem is why you sometimes have the feeling that uh, FL Studio is like for beginners or like, you know, for shitty producers is because there are a lot of them. Uh, the majority of people start with FL Studio. You know, with Logic, not many start because you have to have a Mac to begin with. Ableton Live is also quite an expensive piece of software, so the majority of producers start usually with FL Studio. It's fairly inexpensive. Uh, from what I heard, it's also easy to crack and somehow everybody got some sort of a Windows PC. Obviously, a lot of beginners start with FL Studio. So if you're a beginner and you do some shit on your FL Studio because that's like the most inexpensive thing and you see everybody's using it, all your friends are using it who also just started and you think you are the shit, you start posting your shit on all over social media, uh, all over YouTube, you even start making like fucking tutorials because you're fucking the shit, you know, and uh, at the end of the day, like, you know, some more advanced producers look at it and think like, okay, like FL Studio, like those are fucking douchebags, all of them, you know, and back in the days, it was definitely like that. There was like a big fucking image problem if you were an uh, FL Studio user, like, you know, people legitimately made fun of FL Studio users, me included, of course, <laughs> even though I sucked more than them. Nowadays, it's a little bit different. There are like... Um, quite a number of producers uh, working with FL Studio and achieving like amazing sound. But overall you get the impression that FL Studio is kind of a beginner's type of thing and like for like all those kind of douchebags and knuckleheads it's because you see it the most you know. I usually you know I see like I, I go on YouTube I see thumbnails and uh, there's like some interesting and clickbaity thumbnail and I was like, oh, let's check it out. And I see already in the thumbnail some FL Studio graphics. I don't even fucking click on it because to this day, actually, I got to be honest, I've never seen a very valuable um, tutorial uh, which was made on FL Studio. I mean, most of the times, like those people don't even talk. They just share their screen and shit. I guess uh, this might be the reason why, you know, sometimes people think like, you know, that they that like Ableton or Logic or Cubase is more for advanced producers because usually, you know, those producers who are in this game for more than 10 years, they don't use FL Studio. And usually because they are in this game for more than 10 years, they are kind of also better producers than those who just started last week. And therefore you have the perception that like, you know, uh, you know, if somebody uses uh, Ableton Logic or Cubase or whatever, uh, that he is definitely more knowledgeable or like knows more shit or shit like that. It's not always true, but um, there's a reason why people think about it like it is. I have a curiosity somewhat related to what you said about minimalism and simplicity. When hardstyle producers, but sometimes hardcore and French core producers too, make tracks with kick changes every four bars, annoying fake drops and useless build-ups between the kicks, is that them showing off or do the labels tell them what to do? And do any of those entities involved ever stop for a minute and say, God, this fucking sucks. Are there even fans who seriously appreciate this? At least in my bubble of harder styles fans, both passionate and casual listeners, everyone agrees that this is mostly bullshit. I always try to keep an open mind, but as a fan and amateur producer, I simply don't understand why these unmusical tricks are starting to become the norm. Okay, you said it already. Those are unmusical tricks. And I guess, uh, at least like in my opinion, this shit is much easier to pull off than something musical. I guess um, this is the lowest hanging fruit and people just doing it and everybody else is doing it. And then it becomes to like this being like the big fucking popular thing. And apparently people seem to like it. Uh, on the other hand, to be honest, you know, when I been at parties and I watched like what's going on, I always felt like, especially with those like kick changes, every four drops and shit, uh, nobody's really dancing, you know, um, and raw style people aren't dancing anyway. It's mostly like, you know, they're air drumming because like everybody is fucking Tommy Lee. I definitely feel like it's way too overdone, especially like if you had a raw style party just last weekend, I was at one and if every fucking track has a fake drop, this is kind of fucking weird. And like, you know, if the DJ for once plays a track without a fake drop, like for the first four bars, nobody's really dancing because they didn't understand that's the fucking drop. Because they think like, okay, it's gonna stop again or gonna pitch down and then come back again with like some different kick. Probably those entities involved, I, I talk to a couple of those people every once in a while to label owners and shit. And usually what I get to hear is mostly like, yeah, it's fucking bullshit, but you know, 
you know, that seems like what people want. I, I'm pretty sure uh, the lack of musicality is the reason why it is what it is. Some producers probably are thinking like, okay, this is what's going on, I need to do the same thing and luckily so, because then I don't need to, you know, think about making music and shit, but uh, just, you know, do a lot of edits and like a lot of kicks and stuff and uh, yeah, it's it's uh, in my opinion, it's more like a matter of the lowest hanging fruit. And as long as people are taking it because they don't have any alternative, they are also gonna continue to do it. And uh, to back up what I just said, um, just look at the size of like um, you know hard style music and look at the size of raw style or like you know this whole X raw stuff. Yeah, even like you know those mid card hard style DJs, uh, they. Uh, get more fee, they sell more tickets and do all that shit uh, than like the bigger raw style DJs. Not the biggest, but the bigger ones. So uh, just the market already here shows that, uh, you know, still the hard style stuff with like more musicality seems to be the more popular stuff. Yeah, this is kind of my two cents on that. Don't really say it is what it is. I'm just sharing like, you know, my thoughts. Um, let me know in the comments if you kind of agree with what I said or if you disagree. And again, at the end, it's music. It's all about taste. And, you know, there are definitely people who really love that shit. Like, you know, having every four bars some different kick and like uh, the music stops every time and shit. The crowd for this type of music also doesn't dance. And fun fact, last weekend when I was at that Raw Style party, there have been no chicks at all. No chicks. I mean, what's the, what's the fucking point to go to a party, like a fucking sausage party, and like, you know, standing there and like, you know, doing like your hand movements with your fucking skinny arms and shit. I don't get it. Really, I don't get it. But again, I'm probably also a different generation. I grew up, you go in a club because you want to hook up with chicks. And what's the fucking point to go in a club if there are no chicks? And like, you know, and then like those dudes getting like totally fucked up and pass out on their drugs and shit. I don't get it, but... Again, old man speaking, so sorry for that. <laughs> Maybe somebody is gonna post another death threat. Okay guys, uh, this is pretty much it for this episode. Uh, if you made it up until here, I would highly appreciate if you leave a like. Um, maybe if you wanna go all in, also leave a comment. Doesn't need to be anything specific. Just, you know, put an emoji and say like, yep, great. Or and if you are really, really into like going all the way, you can also subscribe and hit the bell button. And yeah, if you want to support me in any type of way, go to generalguybel.com. You can buy some sample packs and do yourself something good, earn some sound sets and whatever, or you can just download my free shit. What is the point of using OTT on everything? I don't like how OTT sounds, so I shape the texture of my sounds with EQing and then use a good compressor in order to tight the sound. Am I missing something? No, actually you don't miss anything. The point of OTT is it creates a distinct sound. It is kind of hard to recreate that sound anywhere else. I mean, you, it's possible, but it's hard. Because there are uh, multiple factors going into this. First of all, you got those uh, crossovers where like, you know, the frequencies between the different bands get split and that creates like some phasing effect. So you can recreate it with an all pass filter or shit like that or even like with regular low cut and shit like that. So but there is like a phase issue going on on your crossover frequency that already alters the sound. That's why usually when you got a cool sound and you toss an OTT on top, that's why usually it sounds pretty shitty because uh, everything goes really out of proportion and like, you know, your face is completely off. The second thing that goes into the OTT sound, which is the easiest to recreate, uh, is there is like a shit ton of compression going on. The third thing that goes in at the same time while you get a compression, there's also expansion going on. Together with that face shifting shit and, uh, you know, this uh, expansion and compression, it creates kind of a unique sound. So you can't just go in a synthesizer and create a sound like that, simply like that with the same behavior, with the dynamics and everything. It's uh, just not possible to make a sound like that. You can, with un other tools to imitate that same shit, you can do it. But uh, like I said, you know, a certain sound which uses heavily OTT, uh, you cannot just say, 
like, oh, I'm gonna recreate it only in Serum without any third party effects or shit like that, or that OTT for itself. Uh, it's just because the behavior and everything is completely different. I mean, probably with like some crazy modulation with a lot of LFOs and uh, envelopes and shit, probably you could kind of mimic that behavior, but it would be such a nightmare to do it. So there is a distinct sound on that. And you can achieve still good sounds. I mean, like, you know, up until like, you know, many years ago, a couple of years ago, uh, nobody knew about the OTT thing and uh, all music was done too, you know, for the past, like, I don't know how many years. So it's not like, you know, nowadays you can't do shit without OTT, but it really gives you that specific sound and that specific character. But also, you know, you have to find a good sweet spot. Like I said, uh, going in into an OTT with zero dB, uh, that usually already leads to a big fucking disaster. And um, sometimes like 100% on it also is not always like a really good idea. So you have to figure it out for yourself. Like I said in that video uh, about the screeches where you made that comment, uh, in my opinion or in my experience, I, I'm doing much better with it when I put the OTT first and then start to design the sound into it. Cause then I get the best of both worlds. I uh, get that whole OTT sound with that expansion and compression uh, but at the same time I kind of go around this whole phase shifting shit because I design my sound into it so I hear it afterwards and I do decisions based on what I hear coming out so yeah this is the whole thing actually you know to make it short uh, you don't need to use OTT but it fucking helps for specific sounds and specific like uh, sound aesthetics if you will all right, guys, thank you very much for tuning in to the fifth episode of our viewer comments. It is a lot of fun. I really enjoy this type of content and I think I'm going to proceed to do it. So if you have any questions, suggestions, drop me a comment. If you want me to shit all over you, leave me a stupid comment and we're going to arrange that as well. Okay, guys, you stay safe. I see you next time. Bye bye.